Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, amongst the people I have to apologise to, are the author of today's puzzle, James Sinclair. I think last time I solved a puzzle by James, I suggested that he was noted for very difficult puzzles, and that's not true. James produces a uh, kind of newsletter called Artisanal Sudoku, which I know you can search for, and uh, many of his puzzles are approachable. Most are quite approachable at least, um, and they're always good fun. And that puzzle that I was doing last time bore out that it wasn't as difficult as some of the ones we do on this channel, but always interesting when it's James Sinclair. And I'm really looking forward to this. I love the, the question mark in the grid and the puzzle title is Question Everything, which is great advice, of course. Um, and we'll be having a look at the rules in a moment. There is big old negative constraint, just in case you're leaping to the puzzle straight away. Um, and I'm sure that'll play a part in its solution. But talking about solutions and playing their part, uh, we have now released the, the scroll of honor for the solvers of the um, Crack and the Cryptic, which was the July monthly reward. Very well done to those hundreds and hundreds of you who solved all of those. Um, fantastic effort. Um, very well done to Craig Anderson, who won the prize, I believe. And there are only a few days left till we release a new Patreon hunt um, on Patreon. It's going to be a collaboration between ourselves and Glum Hippo. Um, Grockles has leapt in to do the testing, which is very helpful. And uh, that'll be coming out on the 1st of, uh, the 1st of August, obviously. It's uh, tennis themed, I'll say that. And you don't need to know anything about tennis to, uh, to take part. But that's coming out on the 1st. Do join us on Patreon. We are very grateful to anybody who does. Thank you for supporting the channel. It really helps. And what else have we got? We've got all of our apps, which you can get on the links under the video as well. We have a Domino app, which is relevant for XVs. We have a Killer app, which is relevant for the two cages in this puzzle. And we have a Thermo app, which is relevant for the, the big old question mark Thermo. Um, Yes, I'm, I apologise again to James. I think it was an, an absolute calumny if you, uh, if you prepare only, only approachable puzzles that someone comes on the screen and says that you're noted for really difficult ones. That's not fair. Um, so, do try it out on the first link under the video. But I am going to go through the rules now. Normal Sudoku rules apply. That's one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. That's what we have to fill in. Cages show their sums. There are only two little cages in this puzzle. On thermometers, and there's only one of those, digits increase from the bulb to the tip. Uh, digits in cells separated by a V sum to five. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice there are no Vs. So why is that rule there? We will get to that. Digits in cells separated by an X sum to 10. So those two will add up to 10. All possible V's and X's are given. And that's referring to every sort of horizontal or vertical domino. If there is no X or V between a pair of cells, they cannot add up to five or 10. And that's why V's got a mention, because, because clearly no domino in this puzzle adds up to five. Uh, there is one more rule. Digits in a cell with a gray square must be even. And there are four of those. So give it a try. I am going to start now. See how we go. Let's get cracking and do watch out for that negative constraint. But it's a nice start. Um, we sometimes wonder about puzzles which have a five in the middle. This one has to have a five in the middle. The interesting thing about five is is very much at liberty in this puzzle. It can be next to any digit, no problem, um, except where there actually are X's, and then it can't be next to any digit because five would need to be next to another five in one of these rows or columns uh, to be on an X, and that's breaking the rules of Sudoku. So five must be in the center. Uh, the X is, oh, well, that's a one, two, three in the six cage. This eight cage, much harder to know. It's either one, three, four, or one, two, five. Ah. And let us remember the rule. Two and three cannot be next to each other here, or there would be a V between them. So two and three have to be kept apart 
by a chaperone. And that chaperone is a one in the corner. I, right place for a chaperone, really. But uh, that means that this two, three pair are not touching each other and don't need a V. And they're not getting a V. So that must, that corner must be right. Um, oh, look, the thermo. The thermo starts with an X. That's craziness. Okay, well that that's very helpful. I mean, this is this is just a write-in start in a way. What what digits can you put on this X? Well, obviously the lower one will be here in the bulb, and the higher one will be here. Now, if the higher one was any higher than six, say it was seven, what digits could you put along the rest of the thermo? Remember, they need to increase from here. You couldn't do it. So six is the number there, with a four there to make the X sum work then we can fill in the rest of the numbers on the thermo and the thermo is now finished um, and that gives us some x numbers in the row uh, that's all the odds in this row the others are a 2 8 pair and a 4 6 pair oh and look in this central box we've now got yeah remember the negative constraint we've got to place one two three and four but four cannot be next to the six or there would be an x um, 9 cannot be next to 1. 8 cannot be next to 2. Oh, this is beautiful. 7 cannot be next to 3. And here's what I sometimes call a, a chocolate teapot quadruple because there are two possibilities for each cell in a never-ending cycle and we can't actually determine which way they go. Oh, we've got X's in the column as well. Sorry, I should have noticed that. We get a Oh no, just that one needed to be done. We've got a two there. So all the evens this time have been done and the odds have to go in the remaining X's. And this one can't be a one because of that one. So this isn't a nine. And remember the, the V rule, the, the negative constraint. So two cannot be next to three here. So that's not a seven. And similarly, one can't be next to four. Yes, this is quite interesting. Because all of these pairs are one odd and one even, we don't have to worry about them not having an X. That's irrelevant. But we do have to worry in each case about the fact they don't have a V. So this one can't be next to four here. This three can't be next to two. This four can't be next to one. And that limits our options a little bit in the other cells. Now, what's next? Look, here's something lovely. One cannot be in these cells because of that being a four. If there was a one in either of those cells, there'd be a V next to the four to connect them. One can't be in these cells because we know it's in this cage. So one in this row, we can actually place it. It's definitely here because we've got those two ones ruling out those two cells. So these are ruled out by the V rule. These are ruled out by Sudoku based on the killer cage and these two by Sudoku based on ones already placed. Now I wish that actually helped do anything but I'm not sure it does. Can we do something symmetric? Yes we can. In this row where does three go? It's not quite as clean as that one but it's not bad. Three can't go in this box because of the two three pair that we've already put in box one. Three can't go in either of these cells because it would be next to two and would demand a V. It can't go here by Sudoku, so it's in one of these two. And the corner marking is to show one of these two places within the box for that digit. Um, is there a sort of X-wing thing? Ah, no. No, there isn't. Um, this is either 1, 3, 4, which is interesting. If it was 1, 3, 4, 1 and 4 would have to be chaperoned, kept apart in those cells with a 3 there. If it's 1, 2, 5, I don't think there are any pairs of that that break the X or V rule. So, what next? I mustn't forget that in column four, one of those is a three. So none of these can be a three. One of these definitely is a three, I suppose. Oh, or that one. Mm, it's not that helpful. 
Oh, the evens. I'd forgotten the evens. Yes. Oh, let's let's briefly turn boxes four and six into parity colouring. Blue for even. Orange for odd. That's our standard colouring. But these are even, and there's only four blues in each box because there are only four even digits in a Sudoku. So all of these are orange. Those ones are one, five, seven, and nine. These ones are from three, five, seven, and nine, although this one can't be next to a nine. These are from two, four, six, and eight, but there are restrictions because four in this central box is in one of the top two cells. So that can't be a four. I suppose I can make that two, six, or eight as well. Down here, two is in one of those cells, so that's from four, six, or eight, as is that one. Oh, and look, three is not allowed to be, yeah, one is not allowed to be next to four, so there's actually only one place for four to go in the blue. And on the other side, three can't be next to two, so that's not a two, and now there's only one place for two to go, and it's there. So that goes with an eight. This is just uh, X counting. Six, eight, two. And I'm getting all of these even digits done in these boxes. So let's get rid of the colouring now, because it's. I think it's done its purpose there. Um, now, two mustn't be next to three. Not only in this cell, but more importantly in the middle. That's lovely. So that unwinds my chocolate teapot to mix some metaphors hideously. Um, now, these can't have a three in. These can't have a one in. That can't have a one in because it's next to four and there's no V. So we've placed one in box six. Have we placed three in box four? Of course we have. Oh, and the three looks up to this cage. And that fixes this cell if I've done my eliminations correctly. I think I have. Nine, one, Oh, this is now a three seven pair. I don't know the order, but that one is looking down at this box and that two is looking at these cells, which now have to be three and four. Four can't be next to one, so we know the order. That's three in the corner, losing its religion, trying to keep up with you. Three in row two is there, and this is all coming together now quite neatly. Right, where does four go in this box? Not in those cells by Sudoku, not in this one by the negative constraint on Vs, because it would be next to a one. So we get the four there. Um, there's a one here, that's just by Sudoku, and a one, the last one in the grid. They're all done now. Now that doesn't, nothing sorted out the three, seven pay. Yes, something has, the three in the corner has. So one of these two is a three. I meant those two, we know which one it is. It's there. One of these two is a four. This is just looking at the Sudoku aspects. And at the top, there's a two in one of those. Now this sort of thing might help because it means eight can't be in these two cells because it would be next to a two. Down here, six can't be in those. Oh, there's a two in one of these and it can't be next to a three. There's a lot of symmetry here. That was a very similar deduction to the one that placed the four in the rotationally symmetric place. This cell can't be a six because of being next to four. This one probably has two alternatives. Five, six, or eight, but it can't be eight. Ah, oh, and that's weird, actually. We can use those two together. Because if this was six, we'd have nowhere to put six in column four. Because whatever that is appears in one of those two, and it must appear here. So I think it's got to be a five. Uh, then we've got a six, eight, nine, triple here. Now, which of those are impossible? Eight can't be next to two. Six can't be next to four. So that's a nine at the top. I suspect I can't do those. Up here, we've got six, seven, eight. But six can't be next to four, and eight can't be next to four. So this is a seven. Oh, the symmetry is gorgeous in this. Um, I, I didn't know whether symmetry would play a part, given that the, quest, the question mark has a bulb on, 
and that these were six and eight cages, which aren't sort of cognate in my mind. Now there's a two in one of these cells. Uh, that, now it's getting more relevant. Eight can't be in those cells because it would be next to two. So these are from two, six and seven. Must be something else I can do. Oh, seven can't be next to this three. So something like that going on. Nine can't be next to this one. Right, so that's a five, seven pair in the row, and this is a nine. And that's five, and that's seven, and I can come over the other side and do five. And three mustn't be next to seven. So we are away again there. Seven, two, one, four, three. Now, this can't be six. There's a two in column two to place, that's here. Now, where's eight in this box? It's not allowed to be there anymore, or there would be an X next to the two. It can't be there by Sudoku. So it's in one of those, and then there's an eight in one of those that's, again, not allowed to be next to two. So we've got that. This is a naked six. It sees one, two, three, four, nine in the column. 8, 7, 5 in the row, 4 and 9 to place. I don't think, well, I was going to say, I don't think there's an XV rule to choose between those, but there's an actual 4 in the grid to choose between those. That's a naked 9. There's a 5, 7 pair here, which are resolved by 3 being next to one of them. 6, 9 pair here, resolved by 1 being next to one of them. This is a 4 to finish the column. Five, seven, and eight in this group of cells. That can't be seven. This can't be eight. And there, and this can't be five. Six there, sorted out eight and six. That doesn't resolve the eight over here. That is five or seven. So we've placed nine in row eight. Odd this puzzle hasn't quite given up. Maybe I've missed something. Um, right, this is five or eight by what it sees by elimination. This one is also five or eight, so they're a pair, and this must be two or seven. And that hasn't helped. Ah, oh, five is looking at that cell. Right, that's huge. Two and six there. This is eight, that's seven. I think we're going to finish off now. There's basically one box and two other cells to do. Uh, that's become a seven, that's an eight. That finishes off the domino in box two. And that's not too bad at all. I mean, that's been quite a quick puzzle in the end. And yes, do question everything, especially me telling you that James Sinclair sets hard puzzles. He doesn't, not normally. He can, and we have seen them, but not normally. He's a, he's a very good setter. That's a very nice puzzle. Hope you had a go at it. Um, as always, thank you for watching on the channel. It's a pleasure to be part of your evenings or whenever you watch this and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.